On this channel, I'll help you guys build your project cars and your dream cars. So let's get to work. Today we'll be starting on this 240SX. I don't know the year. It's in the uh, 96 range or so. So it was converted to a manual transmission. We had this car here about a week ago. We installed the brand new coilover system, the TN coilovers on here and a few other things. The client was very happy with the product. So he bring the car back and today we're gonna to go ahead and install a brake upgrade kit on it to the Nissan 300Z brake kit. So here's the master cylinder. These are the braided steel brake lines. These are the hat and drum assemblies right here. And these right here are the brakes. So these brakes are bigger than the factory 240 brakes. So this is gonna allow him to have a bit more stopping power. Also, what needs to be installed is the new emergency brake cable line. We have the factory brakes right here. We got the car in the air. Very, very first step to do is get the wheels off, get the car in the air, make sure it's supported on jack stands. You don't wanna get into the car that's not supported. I do have a quick jack, but I'm not using it right now since we're just doing the rear. The client already had the Nissan 300 brakes, 300Z brakes installed on the front. So as you can see, that's a four piston caliper up front versus the factory single piston. We're gonna change these uh, rotors at a later date. Probably when we end up changing the rack and pinion. This rack and pinion is very bad, it's been leaking. So we got a lot of jobs to perform on this car. Other than that, welcome to the channel. For those of you who are new, please like, comment, subscribe if you find this video helpful, not only for you, but if you find it helpful for other people, please like, comment, and subscribe. So let's get started on here. All right guys, so there's a few things you'll need to complete this rear conversion. You'll need a 300ZX rear drum setup that has the e-brake line connected to it or else the drums won't work you'll also need a caliper from a 300zx brake line we chose braided steel on this one and you'll also need a 300zx rotor for the tools you're going to need a half inch drive ratchet you're going to need a needle nose pliers regular pliers which are channel locks you'll also need a 3 8 drive ratchet 19 millimeter wrench, a 17 millimeter wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench, a 13 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter line wrench. These are different. So these are for brake lines, has that opening. So you'll need a 10 millimeter line wrench. You'll need a 10 millimeter uh, wrench, 3 8 drive long extension, 3 8 drive short extension. I use this right here. It's an adapter from a 3 8 drive to a half an inch, just in case I want to use my impact ratchet. I could use it on impacts and a non-impact. To continue, you'll need a 17 millimeter 3 8 drive socket, a 12 millimeter 3 8 drive socket, a 19 millimeter 3 8 drive socket, a 19 millimeter impact, a 27 millimeter impact, a 36 millimeter impact, you also need a pickle fork just in case the axle kind of gets jammed up. You'll need a hammer. You don't need any of these impact tools. This just makes the job a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster. So I always choose Milwaukee. I have my 3 8 drive impact ratchet, my half inch impact ratchet, and, and my 3 8 impact driver. So that's all the tools you guys need. Let's get started on this project. We're gonna go ahead and take off the brake caliper, which is this section right here. So there's a bracket that holds this caliper onto the axle carrier, and it's gonna be these uh, bolts back here. So we're gonna start by removing two bolts. There's one right here, and then there's one up under there. For this bolt right here, it's easier to just get a 17 millimeter in here and break it free. 
Same thing with the bottom back here. We got a 17 millimeter in here and we broke it free. Now that the bolt's loose, we could go ahead and use our Milwaukee 3 8 drive impact wrench with an extension. And we'll go ahead and get that bolt backed up. With the e-brake down and both the bolts are out, the caliper should wiggle right off. Make sure the e-brake down. If the e-brake isn't down, the caliper will be stuck on the car. From this point, we can go ahead and take the hat assembly off. The rotor hat assembly off. The next thing to do is to get this carter pin out, back it out, then we're gonna break the axle nut free. After we break the axle nut free, we're gonna go ahead and start loosening all the control arms and removing them. So we'll start here, here, we'll get this one back here, and we're going to take this strut off back there. What that's going to do is allow this to swing forward, we'll be able to remove the axle. Once we remove the axle, we'll be able to get to these four bolts with a 19 millimeter. So we're going to start by removing these. This is a 19 millimeter. This is a 19 millimeter right here. This is a 19 millimeter. These four bolts back here are 19 millimeter. And I'm not sure about this one yet, but I will let you know as soon as we get to it. So let's go ahead and start removing this stuff. I'm gonna stick this up in here and pry this out. It could be stubborn. Yeah, see this thing is tough. So this next part right here, it looks like a 12 point. It's just a cap. So you can take that out. Next tool up is going to be a 36 millimeter impact that just breaks everything free. We're gonna jump to the top of this thing. I've already loosened the bolts. So I'm just free these right here. Right here. Make sure you keep these nuts and bolts together. If you can, make sure to put the bolts back in location with the nut on them. That's the easiest way to remember where they go because they're in location. So you're gonna head and remove these. And there's a sequence to it. Sometimes um, you can't back out one before you pull out the other. So just like this right here, how this is backing out onto that. So I'm gonna shove that back in there and we'll go ahead and remove this one first. tension on that one so we have that out once that's out we go ahead and lift this up now that that's out the way now that comes out so don't sit there and struggle and try to remove this when this should be removed first and again once you do that put the bolt back in location and then grab the nut that goes to it Put that back on, and that'll be the easiest way to keep track of your nuts and bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get all this taken out the way, off camera, since it'll be a little easier for me. And what I'm gonna do is, once I remove the 17 millimeter back here, and you can't really see off camera, but uh, this axle carrier is free now. You see it moving. So off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pan this this forward. There it goes right there. So the axle is out now.
this one got a little stubborn on us. So what we're gonna do is grab our pickle fork. And we'll stick it in between the axle and we'll pry it out. Okay, with a little finesse in it, we got this thing out. And enough to work on it. So here it goes. Now we got access to these four bolts right here, which is which is a 19 millimeter. So we're gonna head and use this 19 millimeter and break these four bolts free. So we got them broken free with a little breaker bar. Now we're gonna take our, I'm telling you this is the best tool in the toolbox, we're gonna take our 3 8 ratchet drive. So now that those are out, we're gonna go ahead and tap on this and it should break free. Might need a whack because it's old. And there we have it guys. Now that we have that off, what we're going to do is reverse the installation, but instead of putting this backing plate on, we're going to put this backing plate on. So what we just took off right here goes right back on, guys. The only difference is, is that instead of having this sandwiched in there, we're going to have this sandwiched in here, which holds the new drum and hat assembly versus this has your traditional style e-brake connected to the rear disc brake so this is a drum and hat brake so the e-brake is inside of the rotor versus not inside of the rotor like that one which it grabs the disc so this right here is gonna go up in there just like that and then we're gonna take this and bolt it back on the car once we bolt it back on the car slide uh, we're gonna slide the axle nut back on and then we're gonna start assembling all the arms that we took off. We'll go ahead and do that off camera because if I did it on camera, it's just gonna make this video way too long. Always remember, when you are done getting everything back together, you wanna torque this down to the factory recommended specifications. Okay, so there's one part that I didn't show you guys yet and um, this right here, See how it's sticking out and that one doesn't have one? This right here will go inside of this hole right here. Also, this cable is gonna go forward into the car. So if you do it the opposite way, this cable would be pointing towards the rear of the car. So that's how you're gonna know if it's left and right if you don't have these backing plates, which state that it is the right side. Right side is the passenger side in America. So, I'm gonna get to assembling this. So this is a 27 millimeter. This right here will go on to the back of here. It has a recessed slot that it'll sit in. Sorry if you guys can't hear me, there's a lawnmower across the street. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this off camera and uh, place that on there. All right guys, so I got this put together off camera for you guys. The hub's back on. We have the four bolts back in here. One, two, three, four. And we have that one on there, which holds this uh, drum brake assembly in place. Now we're gonna push this all the way down push this backwards and we're gonna inset that spline drive up into the hub now it's time to remove the brakes so we're gonna take our 10 millimeter liner wrench 
and we're gonna break this free. Make sure to have a some type of catch pan, because fluid will leak. So we have that broken free. We're not gonna fully disconnect that right now. Another thing we're gonna do is take our pliers, stick them in here, and pull this out. Now that we have this out, we're gonna take our 12 millimeter and break this brake line on the uh, brake caliper tree and let that fluid drain up in the pan. While that is draining, we're gonna take this off. You don't have to, but I'm gonna take it off. It's gonna make the work just a little bit easier for me. I'm gonna have to do this off camera because um, I'm gonna need two hands for this. Now that that's disconnected and off, we could take this, slide it out, and we're gonna follow this brake line because this new brake line is gonna go in place of it. This is a caliper. It's gonna be a little dark under here. But following that brake line right here, goes to this side. You can see that there's a mount bracket up here. So we're gonna have to get a tool up in there. Get that out. It's a little bracket right here, but that's a clip. So we'll slide that out. Now we're traveling right to that point. And there is a 12 millimeter right here that we're gonna have to disconnect and that's gonna get us to the bracket to where both sides turn into the one so once we get the brake line loose we'll be able to pop it straight out of there And the brake line. We have the brake lines out of the car. So we're gonna check these rotors to make sure they're not directional. The, the way to tell if they're directional or not is not to look at the direction of the uh, slots and the, the drills. It's actually, you tell by looking down inside of it. So, if this is a straight fin, which it is, then it could go on either side. If it's not a straight fin, depending on the angle of it, the manufacturer will want it to go on a certain side. But this has a straight fin, which means it's going vertical inside of the rotor. So it doesn't matter which side it goes on. Some people like them even though it's a straight fin, to kind of chop forward. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this in this direction for him. Everything's tight on the backing plate. So that's in location. Another thing we're gonna do is take the caliper and install the caliper now. What are these Nissan 300ZXs called? Are they called like Z33s or something like that? If I can remember correctly. So, we're gonna put this on. 
And that is perfect. Slid right, ooh, that almost hit my lens. Okay, well, that's on there. I'm gonna get my head in here. That was still looking good, guys. Get this last one back here. All right. So they're just finger tight now. Another thing, since we took off this and we didn't know the condition of it, you wanna make sure that it's not rubbing at any point. And if you see any low spots, just grab your needle nose pliers, stick that in there and curve it back. I did a lot of fixing this one off camera, but uh, if you put your brakes together and you hear some type of squealing, usually it's because of the shroud, so just get your needle nose pliers in there, pull it back like so, and that's clear is perfectly fine now. I'm going to just plug it into the back. I'm not going to fully tighten it yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and plug it into the back. That way, um, once I do put it on there, it'll drip into the caliper versus uh, just dripping out onto the ground. Finger tighten it in there. We'll finish it off with a wrench in a second. I'm gonna get this finger tight in here. It's hard doing a lot of stuff off camera. Glad all I gotta do is show you guys one side. The driver side should be uh, about the same. Okay, good. Now, we gotta put our retaining clip back inside of there. So we'll grab our retainer clip. Make sure it goes under there properly. Nice. Take our hammer, give that a few wax. wanted to sit all the way in there like that a little bit past the ledge so that's all connected last thing to do is take our 10 millimeter line wrench and start getting this thing all tight then we're also going to tighten that up down there from there we're gonna Grab our brake line, route it back through the same way it came from, which was under here, through here, back over this, um, where is it at? Let's see if we get it on camera. Back over this control arm right here, and then we're gonna use the existing mounting points which is the 10 millimeter for this one and the 12 millimeter for this one and it should slide right back into location all right guys so we got everything done we have the brake line and the clip installed we have everything set back up here everything back here back here is tightened we have the new caliper on with the uh, drum brake assembly behind this. We have this new caliper attached as well. The last thing that we did was run the emergency brake line through it. So let's go check that out. <laughs> So as you can see, we got the brake line hooked up. When we get back here, when we get back here, we're following the line over the drive shaft. And we have it hooked back up into there. The cool thing is that we have it attached into there. 
So this setup's all done, guys. The last thing I gotta do is just go ahead, put it up there, place the 12 millimeter onto that location, and we are done. So if you found this video helpful, even if it doesn't help you, and it might help one of your friends or someone you do know, you should go ahead and share this video with them. I'm trying to bring you guys some educated videos and some how-tos. That way you could do it yourself at your house, in your own garage, build and drive it. So again, if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys soon.